Well, I hope you enjoyed the book of Joshua. Uh, We now turn to the next book, which is the book of Judges, and then the book after that, which is Ruth. Now, just to make sure we have the historical flow of things, remember Abraham, the father of the nation of Israel, lived about 2000 B.C. In the time of Joseph, his grandson, they went down to live in Egypt. After 400 years, God brought them out of their bondage, and that was about 1400 B.C. The children of Israel wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, and then under the leadership of Joshua, they entered the Promised Land. So now with the book of Judges, we come to the period of time after the death of Joshua and before the first king in Israel, and this is called the time of the Judges. This is a period that's going to last about 350 years. It was a time in which there was no central leadership in the nation, but when necessary, God would raise up a judge to lead the people, and there are 14 judges mentioned in the book of Judges. Now, many of these judges were military leaders such as Deborah and Gideon and Samson. Because of their exploits in battle, they deliver the people. And for example, one little known but characteristic example is Shamgar, who's mentioned briefly in Judges chapter 3. He kills 600 Philistines with an ox goad, which was a long wooden uh, stick, uh, and we call it a cattle prod today. So let's talk about the book of Judges. There are some characteristic phrases that we find in the book. One is that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Another is that the Spirit of the Lord came upon a certain person. And another is that every man did what was right in his own eyes. Now our best guess at who wrote the book of Judges uh, might be Samuel, who was the last of the judges and the first of the prophets. So in the first couple of chapters in the book of Judges, we see the problem that the Israelites fell into. They served God all the days of the leaders uh, uh, from the time of Joshua, but the people apparently did not pass uh, their faith on to their children very well because in the next generation, that next generation that grew up did not serve the Lord or love the Lord. And well, when this happened, they began to worship the pagan gods of the nations who were around them. And there were still pagan nations around them because they did not drive out the nations as God had told them to. They either let them reside near them, uh, sometimes they subjugated them, or they simply didn't have the faith or the power to drive them out. And when that happened, the people began to worship their gods and they departed uh, from the worship of God. And he says that he will therefore refuse to help them. Well, the great thing about the book of Judges is that it has wonderful stories in it. Uh, There's the story of Deborah and Barak in chapters 4 and 5. And here's an uh, an Old Testament example of a woman in leadership, and we see how God uses her. Uh, We see what God did through Gideon in chapters 6 through 8. God uses Gideon in an important way, but he falls prey to, to sin in his later life. We have a strange story about Jephthah in chapter 11. Jephthah is brave but foolish, and he makes a foolish vow and to compound things. He carries out his foolish vow when he should have uh, not done so. Starting in chapter 13, we have another story about a person of great strength but whose faith was weak and always a bit childish. Uh, It's Samson, and he's a compelling figure because of his superhuman strength. But he falls prey to his own foolishness. But he will be vindicated at the end of his life, but at the cost of his life. Well, the book of Judges ends with an odd but heartbreaking story in the final chapters that illustrates the moral decay of the nation that that almost overwhelms them at certain points. Well, here's an interesting but a very difficult time for the people of Israel. The repeated pattern of this time is the people's disobedience, God's judgment on them, their suffering and their eventual cry for help, and God's deliverance. But the people are not going to learn, and this cycle will be repeated over and over. Now, after the book of Judges comes the book of Ruth, and uh, here's a short but delightful little story. After the rather depressing book of Judges, uh, I think Ruth is a welcome change. And this is a story that probably would not have been recorded in the Bible, except Ruth will end up being the great-grandmother of David the king. And this makes this story of interest as well as it being a story about loyalty and faith. Now I won't say too much about uh, about, uh, Ruth as this story may always already be familiar to you, Uh, but it's a, a story, a great story of providence in the Bible. Ruth is a young woman who's not a native Israelite. She returns with her mother-in-law Naomi to the city of Bethlehem. 
Uh, but she does so out of love and out of faith. She makes a commitment not only to Naomi, but to her God. And uh, God provides for her in a marvelous way and will place her in the family line of David. Now what makes this story even more intriguing is when we realize who the mother of Boaz was. She was also someone who was not a native Israelite. His mother was none other than Rahab the harlot, who was saved from the destruction of Jericho because she helped the spies. We don't learn this in the book of Ruth, but in Matthew's genealogy in Matthew 1 and verse 5. Well, this will get you started on these two wonderful books. Enjoy the book of Judges and the book of Ruth. There are lots of lessons about life and faith and commitment to God in them.